Rahim. Assalamualaikum and good morning to everyone. Minta maaf apa saya start sedikit lambat hari ni sebab tukar tukar workstation. So macam ambil masa sikit nak figure out all the uh, new kan new lah. All the uh, apa uh, things and materials yang ada dekat workstation baru ni. So um, hopefully you are inside the paddock right now. There are currently 22 students here. Um, ada lagi enam orang tak masuk lagi dekat paddock ni. Please do so. Okay uh, a bit of a recap. Uh, last week before we do our PBD, last Wednesday kita discuss mengenai body defense mechanism. Uh, we started off with uh, lymphatic system. Uh, lymphatic system tu sebenarnya chapter sebelum ni. Masa lymphatic system tu kita belajarlah formation of uh, lymph, uh, apa kaitan dia dengan lymph, uh, apa formation of tissue fluid dan juga how do the lymphatic system complements the blood circulatory system. One of the uh, main concept atau main function of lymphatic system yang kita discuss sebelum ni yang berkaitan dengan chapter sekarang ialah uh, the ability for the lymph system to produce lymphocytes. So uh, we will discuss further about that particular ability uh, today and then uh, uh, right after discussing lymphatic system too we have also discussed about uh, first line of defense. Uh, we talk about how the skin, how the mucus and uh, sweat glands, hydrochloric acid and so on and so forth. How all of this work together to form a non-specific defense to defend our body from different types of uh, infection, from antigens and from pathogen. Satu lagi istilah yang kita telah discuss last week ialah antigen, pathogen dengan antibody. Antigen tu is a uh, is a structure on a is a structure that exists on the surface of a cell that uh, serves as a identification of a cell but once it uh, that particular cells enter a foreign body it will dis uh, enter in another person's body for example uh, katalah sel darah merah kita masuk ke dalam sel darah merah orang lain it will be identified as a foreign cell, as a foreign antigen. For example, kita uh, saya berdarah kumpul, darah kumpulan B, saya donate kepada orang, darah saya masuk ke dalam badan orang yang berdarah kumpulan A. So orang darah kumpulan A itu akan uh, the body will identify my antigen uh, from red blood cell B as a foreign material that should be destroyed immediately lah. Sebab itu kita uh, ada discuss mengenai tindak balas antibody pada masa tu. Okay, uh, sekejap ya. Tiba-tiba saya punya dashboard tidak berfungsi pula. Alright, uh, sekejap eh. Hmm. Wait ah. Uh. Hmm. Okay, let me see here. Dia ada sort of. Alright. Okay, dah jadi. <coughs> okay, today we are going to discuss about um, second line of defense. Uh, kita akan discuss about fever, phagocytosis and also inflammation lah. And how does it relate to each other. Sebenarnya, <coughs> dia bukan lah. Tiga ni bukanlah uh, perkara yang uh, fenomena <coughs> yang berlaku separately. Jom kita tengok dulu uh, the process phagocytosis first ya. Yeah? So um, kita tengok pada video ni sekejap. Kita tengok uh, pada video ni macam mana phagocytosis berlaku uh, when it is observed under a powerful microscope. So as you can see here, 
the pathogens are already agglutinated. Uh, dia dah terkumpul setempat. Uh, kemudian when it is already agglutinated, it is easier for the phagocytes in our uh, phagocytic white blood cell to start to go uh, to each group of um, agglutinated cells tu untuk buat phagocytosis ya. Jom kita tengok lagi sekali. So the white blood cells terus extend its pseudopodium and then start to engulf that the agglutinated uh, pathogens. Uh, pathogens tak semestinya berkumpul macam ni. Kadang-kadang uh, dia -kadang exist uh, kalau kita tengok pada sebelah kiri video tu uh, ada yang uh, pathogens tu dia individual pathogens kan. So phagocyte, apa, phagocytes also can move around, white blood cell boleh move around and uh, engulf this individual pathogens. But uh, nanti bila kita discuss mengenai antibodies, there are several antibodies exist to further uh, increase the uh, rate of phagocytosis by helping to collect lepas tu kumpul setempat semua pathogens ni so that it can uh, apa it can uh, be apa the process of phagocytosis tu can occur faster lah since the white blood cells can simply goes to one side where the uh, pathogens are located and agglutinated ha, lepas tu boleh terus consume sekali harum kan okey jom kita tengok the next part kat sini Okay, so as we can observe from the video, the process of phagocytosis occurs in several stages. So when an infection occurs, the phagocyte will move to the infected area and enter the tissue fluid through the pores of the capillary wall. As we have discussed before, one of the many contents of the blood is white blood cell. Dalam kes phagocytosis, the white blood cells atau leukocyte that we will discuss are uh, neutrophil, monocyte uh, dan satu lagi macrophage. Tapi macrophage kita discuss uh, lepas kita discuss third line of body defense mechanism. Tapi macrophage juga boleh buat phagocytosis. Yeah? Uh, please bear that in mind. Um, so when an infection occurs, phagocytes will move out of the blood vessels and enters the tissue fluid. Sebab apa? Sebab white, white, white blood cell ni dia uh, flexible. Dia tak macam red blood cell. Uh, dia ada bentuk yang fix dan uh, dia hanya boleh, dia flexible bila diameter of the blood vessels changes saja to actually go through the uh, capillary wall dia tak boleh ya. So uh, when the phagocyte enters the tissue fluid it will start to detect the presence of uh, pathogens atau dalam kes dalam gambar ni they start to detect the presence of microbes or antigens. So the phagocyte will start to extend its pseudopodia. Kenapa kita panggil pseudopodia? Sebab ada dua tangan keluar kat situ. Sudo means palsu. Podia means kaki. Bukan tangannya kaki. So kaki palsu is pseudopodia. Uh, so the pseudopodia extended towards the bacteria and it will start to envelop the bacteria forming a vesicle called phagosome. So bila dah membentuk vesicle phagosome, phagosome will combine with lysosome where inside the lysosome there is an enzyme called lysozyme uh, that will destroy, that will digest the bacterium. The, once the bacterium has been destroyed, the phagocyte will expel the remains of the digested microorganisms right out of the cell. So, um, as we can see here, kenapa uh, proses ni dia kata apa, uh, lebih, uh, a bit complex sebab 
kenapa kena ada formation of vesicle sebab kalau kita just simply engulf and uh, kalau white blood cell simply engulf without any protective barrier around the bacterium uh, macam mana uh, apa macam mana digestion tu boleh berlaku uh, there is a risk of the lysozyme to digest other organelles surrounding the trap atau engulf bacterium ni. Jadi to in order to ensure the process of digestion uh, occurs in a secure place that is why it forms uh, white blood cell will form phagosome dulu membentuk vesikel combine dengan another vesikel another organelle that has enzyme inside it lysosome jadi berlakulah proses digestion dalam uh, secure place uh, that prevents the enzyme to go out of the cytoplasm digest organic pula kan. So base uh, apa uh, base pula. So lepas tu uh, another mechanism of second line of defense is inflammation. Based on your reading uh, based on the textbook can you describe what is inflammation? Can you describe what is inflammation? Secara umumnya, can you describe? Yes, very good. Uh, inflammation is immediate response, nombor satu. Nombor dua, bila kita describe kawasan tu mengalami inflammation, apa yang kita uh, kita dapat lihat dekat situ, the inflamed area jadi apa? Okay, bila description, uh, kita apa yang kita nampak bila berlaku uh, inflammation? Yes, it is an immediate response. Um, Okay, it is an immediate response. Okay, ah yes, apa yang kita boleh observe kat situ, inflamed area will swell, turn red and feel painful. Very good. Okay, ah, yes. So, dia, uh, it is an early response at early stages of infection. Ah, kita Apa yang kita nampak, kesan dia ialah uh, apa, it will uh, the inflamed area will swell, turn red and feel painful. So ad, saya perasan ada juga yang tulis kat sini uh, rapid response that destroy and neutralize the harmful action of microorganism and toxin. So macam mana mechanism uh, destroy and neutralize harmful action of microorganisms tu berlaku? Okay ya. So bila infection occurs, semua ni berjalan dengan serentak. Uh, nombor satu uh, bila infection occurs, white blood cell tadi, uh, macam saya, saya tunjuk video fagocytosis tadi, white blood cell atau leukosite will start to go, uh, go out of the blood capillary wall, go through the capillary wall, pergi ke infection site. Then once dia dah pergi ke infection site, um, once dia dah pergi ke infection site, dia start buatlah uh, tindak balas uh, fagocytosis tu. Pada masa yang sama, the uh, damaged tissue uh, in the infected area will start to release histamine that will stimulate 
the blood capillaries to start to expand and then bila blood capillaries expand uh, formation of tissue fluid tu jadi lebih lebih banyak dan lebih cepat lah. So more tissue fluid are formed in the inflamed area causing the infected area tu to have more uh, to have more white blood cells uh, to be there, more water to be there, uh, more volume of tissue fluid will be in that particular area. Sebab itulah kawasan tu jadi swelling sebab ada accumulation of tissue fluid for that particular area. Lepas tu selain daripada itu uh, it will also uh, apa apa bila lebih banyak tissue fluid form in the area it will also release uh, clotting factors uh, dan clotting factors tu will start to produce start to do the blood clotting mechanism lah manakala bilangan phagocytes atau bilangan uh, white blood cell yang semakin bertambah itu membolehkan lebih banyak phagocytosis berlaku so i repeat once again uh, once um, apa there is a dam apa once there is a damaged tissue damaged tissue will release histamine which will uh, stimulate atau cause the blood capillaries to expand so that more uh, more blood will flows into the area causing the more formation of tissue fluid so uh, more phagocytes can go to the infection site, more clotting factors can go to the infection site causing two things. Lebih banyak phagocytes can do phagocytosis untuk uh, attack pathogen yang masuk ke dalam badan kita dekat infection site tu. Nombor dua, pada masa yang sama, clotting factors tu will stimulate the formation of uh, the apa the start of blood clotting mechanism dan apa um, bilangan phagocytes yang banyak ini boleh membantu lebih banyak patogen untuk dimusnahkan melalui phagocytosis. So uh, dalam description kita hanya bagi tahu kata uh, inflammation tu immediate response dia adalah apa bila ada immediate response boleh destroy and neutralize harmful action microorganism dan juga causing the inflamed area to swell turn red and feel painful tetapi bagaimana dia boleh uh, apa kawasan bengkak tu boleh menyebabkan destruction atau neutralization of microorganisms ah uh, sebab ni lah sebab ada Memula dengan secretion of histamine, lebih banyak tisu fluid, lebih banyak phagocyte akan masuk ke infected area, lebih banyak clotting factors akan pergi ke infect, uh, apa, uh, injured area, inflamed area so that blood clotting mechanism can occur. So based on your understanding, we have discussed here, kita dah discuss kat sini dua daripada tiga mechanism of um, uh, second line of defense lah. Uh, jom kita tengok sample question related to this. So based on your understanding, can you explain the action of blood cell Q against bacteria? Uh, Maka dia empat. Okay, dia punya guide ada dekat situ ya. Kita boleh mulakan dengan nama proses and then what are the characteristics of process, what cells are involved for example and then describe the step one by one and describe what happens to the bacteria. Dia punya guide ada dekat situ ya, boleh tengok.
Okay, good job. You are off to a good start. Ya, kita bagi nama dulu. Ha, nama proses tu ialah phagocytosis. Very good. Okay. Ha, lepas tu involve phagocyte specifically apa? Apakah nama white blood cell yang terlibat tu? Specifically. Okay, specifically ya. Ha, tapi nanti jangan confuse ya. Nanti bila kita cakap pasal third line of defense, ada juga uh, another phagocyte yang kita akan discuss. Nama dia macrophage. Tapi macrophage ni kita akan discuss lebih kepada peranan dia semasa third line of defense lah. Okay. Okay, let's see here. Uh, alright, you are on the right track. Okay, nama proses, uh, nama phagocyte dia ialah apa? Seperti uh, neutrophil, um, bagi satu pun boleh, neutrophil and monocyte. Okay, lepas tu baru kita cerita dia punya proses. Uh, seperti from what I can see here, okay, your description are good. Okay, your description are good. Seperti, Allah Akbar kejap eh. Saya lebarkan dulu. Alright. Okay, your description are good. Ada yang mention uh, mengenai, uh, bermula dengan extension of pseudopodia. Yes. And then, uh, bila extend pseudopodia, envelope bacteria to form phagosome. Uh, good. And then, phagosome combine with lysosome, membentuk phagolysosome dan membentuk phagolysosom baru digestion occurs lah. Digestion of bacterium occurs. And then uh, lepas tu dah akhir sekali jadi apa? Ah, Destroy bacteria boleh. Kill bacteria pun boleh. Good. Okay. Phagosat that expel the remains of the uh, bacteria, digested microbe to the environment. Alright. Okay, so mula-mula kita bagi tahu dulu proses dia ialah phagocytosis. Ha, kemudian nombor dua kita bagi tahu, nombor dua kita bagi tahu apakah nama white blood cell yang terlibat. Ha, nama dia ialah apa tadi? Neutrophil dan juga um, neutrophil dan juga satu lagi apa? Bagi satu pun boleh, tak ada masalah ya. Ha, contohnya neutrophil. Boleh tulis dulu? Okay. Pros, apa nama sel yang terlibat ialah neutrophil. Uh, white blood cell jenis neutrophil atau jenis monocyte. Okay. Lepas tu barulah kita cerita mekanisma dia satu persatu. Sebagai contoh, mula-mula um, neutrophil me, apa, extend pseudopodia. Dikeluarkan pseudopodia. Macam tangan yang keluar daripada badan kan. Ha. Extend pseudopodia. Lepas extend pseudopodia, uh, the bacterium will be engulf atau dimasukkan ke dalam uh, apa uh, phagosome. Dalam vesikel nama dia phagosome. Okay. Uh, neutrophil extend pseudopodia. Okay, neutrophil extend pseudopodia and form dan membentuk phagosome. Ha, habis cerita. Ha, simple. Sebab makan dia empat saja ya. 
tak di soalan yang sama uh, boleh push sampai 5 to 6 marks ya. Eh? Okey lepas tu form phagosome. Bila dah membentuk phagosome Okey bila dah membentuk phagosome uh, phagosome combine with lysosome to form phagolysosome pula kan. Okey. Lepas phagosome combine dengan lysosome barulah digestion of bacterium tu berlaku sebab dalam lysosome ada lysozyme. Okey. Neutrophic extends pseudopodia and form phagosome. Alright, I give you another uh, apa? few minutes ya. Yeah. Maka dia empat saja. Uh, there are around six points here yang kita boleh cerita yang boleh input dalam jawapan lah. Uh, memang up until sampai kita boleh kata uh, kill the bacteria atau destroy the bacteria at the end product ya. Eh. Okay, saya bagi satu sampel jawapan kat sini. Saya screenshot dulu eh. Satu sampel jawapan. Dan saya akan share dalam grup jugalah. Okay. Saya lupa lah nak tanda dulu. Oh, ada soalan sebentar. Oh, tak ada ya. Alright, alright. Eh, hey, tak ada eh. Types of white blood cell. Bukan dalam text what, dalam types of white blood cell dekat chapter sebelum ni. Uh, kita ada belajar types of white blood cell, neutrophil, uh, macrophage, Uh, monosite uh, Bermula kita belajar white blood cell ada dua kumpulan um, hmm, Kena cakap ke? Uh, for me personally kena Kena sebut sebab Tak semua white blood cell boleh buat phagocytosis um, Previously it is acceptable if you say uh, Phagocyte sahaja tetapi sebab proses ini dilakukan oleh white blood cell So uh, kita kena sebutlah nama jenis white blood cell tu Nombor satu Nombor dua sebabnya tak semua white blood cell boleh buat phagocytosis Okay So kalau boleh sebut at least satu uh, Okay lah uh. Uh, dia kita di, kita belajar ni dalam chapter sebelum ni yang uh, different components of uh, blood tu different types of white blood cell actually. Okay. So kejap ya. Hmm. Alright. Satu dua envelope bacteria from phagosome Combine with lysosome, secret lysozyme, destroy phagosome, expel the remains. Okay. Sekejap ya. Lantar balik supaya boleh nampak dekat mana tu dapat point tu ya. Alright. Oh sorry saya dah clock eh. Sekejap ya. Okay. So a sample, que a sample answer saya dah bagi dekat dalam telegram nanti boleh rujuk eh. Okay so sekarang ni uh, bila kita bercakap mengenai fever so basically fever ni adalah uh, apa reaction yang badan kita buat to increase the temperature of our body for uh, several reason. Number one Uh, when there is an increase in temperature, it will, all, it will increase the phagocytic activity against microorganism lah. Maknanya bila temperature increases, uh, neutrophil dengan um, 
neutrophil dengan monosite ni akan bekerja dengan lebih aktif untuk buat fagositosis nombor satu. Nombor dua kat suhu yang tinggi adalah tidak sesuai untuk pertumbuhan microorganism. So it will also um, apa uh, reduces the the number of microorganisms lah dan mengurangkan uh, activity microorganism uh, dalam uh, kita punya badan. Sebab tu kita kena ada fever. So minta maaf saya terpaksa uh, pergi ke slide yang seterusnya. So uh, the, for the next part kita akan tengok uh, apakah immune response of the lymphocyte secara detail kita, sebab lepas ni kita nak tengok third line of uh, defense pula ya. Yeah? Sekejap saya tunggu ibu tulis habis. Okay sorry uh, sorry ya Asya saya pergi ke next slide dulu ya. Yeah? Alright. So uh, So dalam third line of defense, sekejap ya, saya lupa nak tukar kepada draw function. Saya tambah sekarang. So that you can take notes on this particular slide ya. So that when we talk about third line of defense, we will talk about the role of lymphocytes in uh, providing us with a uh, third line of defense lah. Okay. So, um, okay. Jadi, uh, dalam badan kita, the lymphatic nodes, the lymph nodes produce lymphocytes yang ada dua jenis. Iaitu T lymphocyte dan B lymphocyte. Okey, secara umumnya kalau kita tengok kita punya sukatan dia hanya sebut T lymphocyte stimulate B lymphocyte manakala B lymphocyte pula produce memory cell and it can um, produce B lymphocyte ni will be converted into uh, memory cell nombor satu, nombor dua function dia mainly untuk produce antibody lah dalam satu minit dia boleh produce uh, millions tak silap saya around millions of antibody So um, kalau kita nak tengok diagram yang saya bagi ni uh, explain dengan lebih baik lah macam mana T lymphocyte dengan B lymphocyte ni bekerja sama ya. Mula-mula apabila berlaku infection, uh, silakan Atirah. Okay. Mula-mula bila berlaku infection, um, bakteria ni akan uh, apa uh, uh, akan melalui proses apa akan dimusnahkan atau will be destroyed by phagocytosis. So when the um, when the amount of bacteria that enters in our body is a lot and causes major problems for phagocytosis, the uh, phagocyte, uh, tak kisahlah, phagocyte tu adalah neutrophil ke uh, monocyte ke atau macrophage, Okay, the macrophage will be converted to become dendritic cell that will have the uh, information. Uh, information sebab tadi macrophage atau phagocyte tadi dia dah destroy the uh, pathogen tadi kan. Dia dah musnahkan pathogen tadi. Tadi tadi phagocyte tu dia ada information. Apakah karakter karakteristik atau feature yang ada pada pathogen. Sebagai contoh dekat dalam gambar ni microbe lah. So microbe ni antigen dia macam mana, uh, dia ada produce apa dan sebagainya. So phagocyte yang ada maklumat ini dipanggil sebagai dendritic cell. Then, and this information that we, that was held by the dendritic cell will be con, uh, will be transferred to the T lymphocyte. Jadi T lymphocyte dia dah bertukar jadi helper T lymphocyte. Yang ni kena ingat ke? Tak payah ingat ya. Uh, untuk sukatan kita uh, uh, tak perlu sampai ingat helper T lymphocyte dan sebagainya. Yang penting kita tahu dekat sini macam mana helper T lymphocyte stimulate B lymphocyte dengan cara helper T lymphocyte ni sudah ada maklumat how, uh, what are the features of the microbe and then it will activate B lymphocyte 
so that B lymphocyte will produce specific antibodies to uh, counter atau to destroy the invading pathogens. So, um, apa itulah kalau nak discuss secara spesifik itulah peranan T lymphocyte untuk stimulate B lymphocyte. Dia bukan stimulate saja sajalah T lymphocyte ha actually has the information of the invading pathogens. Bila dia ada information, T lymphocyte itu akan inform B lymphocyte okay this is the invading pathogens uh, you need to uh, B lymphocyte will decide okay I need to produce uh, this type of antibody. So uh, B lymphocyte pun produce specific antibodies and at the same time uh, several clones of the specific B lymphocyte tu akan convert atau bertukar jadi memory cells and it will stay dormant inside our lymph nodes inside our body sampailah dia activated bila ada infection by the same type of pathogen. Nanti dia akan activated dan terus produce antibody. So proses untuk dari macrophage, uh, phagocytosis sampailah nak produce antibody ni proses dia makan 2-3 hari. Tetapi once our body have the memory cells, uh, next time ada infection Uh, mungkin kita tak ada simptom demam pun sebab antibody yang dihasilkan terus dapat musnahkan mikrob yang attack our body immediately without uh, causing adverse effects to our body. So, um, sekejap ya saya nak tengok kot lah dekat slide ni ada siapa-siapa yang tanya tak ada ya. Tapi kenapa saya cerita juga uh, mengenai helper T lymphocyte, activated B lymphocyte ni sebab bila saya lihat subtopic HIV rupa-rupanya uh, macam kena tahu juga sikit-sikit peranan lymphocyte dengan B lymphocyte, T lymphocyte dengan B lymphocyte ni sebabnya HIV dia attack T lymphocyte. So if we don't understand the uh, function atau the role of T lymphocyte susah sikit kita nak explain lah macam mana HIV tu menyebabkan uh, AIDS. Apa kaitan HIV dengan AIDS pula nanti ya. So um, let's memandangkan kita dah sebut pasal function of B lymphocyte producing antibodies. Jom kita tengok several types of antibodies produce uh, to engage atau to attack different types of uh, infection. Okay. Dalam diagram ini Okay, dalam diagram ini menunjukkan uh, different action of antibodies. Can you label which one is agglutination, yang mana satu opsonization, yang mana satu lysis, neutralization and also precipitation? Uh, boleh boleh uh, update dekat situ ya. Okay, ah, ada banyak dah ni. Oh, saya kena besarkan sikit. Okay, saya besarkan sikit ya.
Okay, let's see your answer here. Hmm, oh, kecil lah pula ya. Kita dah besarkan sikit. Alright, good. Um, pada uh, pada title yang warna purple tu kan, yang dua kat bawah tu, uh, itu pun boleh letak ya. Reaction apa? Reaction, what type of uh, antibody reaction kat situ ya. Okay. Tujuh orang tak masuk lagi ya. Ah, tujuh orang ni. Tujuh orang, tujuh orang. Ya, tujuh orang yang sama pula tu ya. Hmm. Okay. So, ah, yang warna purple kat bawah tu pun boleh letak ya. Ah, ada lagi ah, dua kan. Dua reaction yang belum letak kan. Letak kat warna purple bawah tu ya. Okey. Yang warna purple kat bawah tu macam yang uh, ada ada ruang kosong and phagocytosis. So apa dia? Apa proses dia? Uh, lepas tu yang ada sel jadi pecah tu proses apa dia? Ya. Yeah. Hmm. Sikit lagi. Almost there. I give you another minute ya. Yeah. Lepas tu kita discuss, okay? Sekejap. Mm. Alright. Tiga puluh satu ya. Tiga puluh satu orang ya. Eh. Alright, alright, alright. Tiga puluh satu orang. Sorry, 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 sorry. Saya salah, saya salah. Okay, okay. Boleh, boleh. Boleh buat jawab ya. Sorry ya. Terscroll. Okay. So ada dua lagi kan kat situ. Apa dia? Um, yang warna purple tu apa reaction dia? Okay. There are five reactions. Okay. Alright. Oh sorry saya dah lock ya. Okay. So let's take a look here uh, your sample answer. Okay. Um, uh, nampaknya the uh, sample yang saya tunjuk kat sini dia short lagi dua ya. Okay. So for the first one. Okay. For the first one saya setuju it is uh, agglutination. Kalau kita tengok dekat sini. Eh sorry. Dia bukan agglutination. The first one is precipitation. Sorry ya. The first one is precipitation. Cuba tengok pada description. Pada description dia sebut dekat situ uh, antigen ni mula-mula dalam keadaan soluble. Maknanya dalam keadaan yang larut air. Jadi when we uh, when the antibody reacts to the antigen it causes the antigen to become Uh, insoluble. Dia jadi solid form. Dia jadi precipitate. Uh, so bila dia jadi precipitate, uh, dia jadi lagi jelas untuk macrophage buat phagocytosis. Uh, kalau tak sebelum ni uh, mula-mula nak apa white blood cell nak buat phagocytosis. Nak makan antigen ni tapi dia tak nampak sebab Antigen tu dalam keadaan yang larut air. Tak jumpa. Jadi bila antibody datang, it changes the antigens to become uh, from soluble to become insoluble form. Maka uh, apa antigen tu jadi precipitate, jadi solid form yang lebih jelas untuk phagocyte ngap dia. Buat phagocytosis. Okey, yang kedua memang agglutination. Ha, nampak contoh yang dia bagi pun contoh dia red blood cell kan yang kita dah discuss sebelum ni. Kita asyik cakap uh, kalau um, apa kumpulan darah yang 
uh, masuk dalam badan tu is not suitable it will agglutinate agglutinate kan so this is the function lah this is the uh, reaction of the antibody ya yeah? so it links the uh, antigens together causes clumping dia akan jadi a big mass uh, jadi satu uh, apa kumpulan besar antigen menjadi lebih jelas dan lebih cepat untuk proses fagositosis berlaku. And then neutralization pula, okay kalau kita tengok dekat sini, some of the pathogens produces dangerous uh, dangerous secretion macam uh, apa toxins jadi the antibody surround surrounds the secretion mengelilingi atau cover uh, the toxin menyebabkan toxin tu can no longer attach to the cells on our body causing harmful effects to our body ada sesetengah mikroorganism dia merembeskan uh, bahan-bahan yang berbahaya kepada badan kita seperti uh, toksin. Jadi antibody ni akan melekat pada permukaan toksin menyebabkan toksin tu tidak boleh melekat pada sel-sel badan kita dan menyebabkan badan sel badan kita rosak ke mati ke macam tu lah. Jadi once it is uh, apa can no longer influence atau effect our cells, the toxins are neutralized. So as if you, uh, as you can see here from the diagram bila dah berlaku precipitation agglutination and neutralization uh, precipit precipitation itu sendiri tidak menyebabkan uh, antigen atau pathogen to destroy tapi the subsequent process after that once precipitation dah habis phagocytosis occur bila dah sel-sel to agglutinate phagocytosis berlaku untuk memusnahkan atau to destroy the agglutinated cell. Once neutralization occurs, the white blood cell, the phagocytic white blood cell will uh, consume the neutralized substances uh, then substances tu pun destroy. Another uh, reaction of antibody is opsonization. Uh, basically kalau tak ada antibody opsonization ni, phagocyte tak kenal. Ha, ini, is this a friendly cell or a foreign cell? Is this a microbe? Is this, is this a pathogen or a friendly cell? White blood cells tak kenal. So, opsonization enables the white blood cell to identify, oh this is something that I should destroy and then white blood cell pun boleh ngap, boleh buat phagocytosis untuk memusnahkan uh, pathogen atau antigen that has been opsonized. Uh, yang telah di, basically opsonization ni antibody ni bertindak sebagai marker lah uh, untuk uh, inform the phagocyte, okay you can consume this one. Nah, uh, this, this, this one is dangerous. Okay. Satu lagi yang terakhir adalah antibody. Ha, antibody ni dia power sikit lah sebab dia sendiri boleh musnahkan atau that particular antibody itself can destroy the antigen and causes the bacteria to be broken down and decompose. Ha, nama antibody tu ialah antibody yang boleh buat lysis. So it can simply attach to the surface of the uh, antigen. For example, kalau dekat atas ni, ha, sebenarnya kalau kita pergi, kalau kamu belajar nanti dekat higher level biology atau kamu buat Australian matriculation ke, buat SAT ke, uh, dua reaction ni akan dimasukkan dalam action of antibody iaitu inflammation dan juga complement. Okay, tapi dalam level kita, inflammation tu adalah dalam second line of defense ya. Yeah? So uh, ada antibody dia boleh attach pada antigens on the surface of the um, um, of the pathogens atau dalam kes contoh yang diberikan kat sini uh, antibody tu boleh attach kepada membrane and destroy subsequently destroy the membrane. So all the contents of that particular microorganism akan terkeluar lah semua cytoplasm dia, organelles, the nucleus dia semua terkeluar. So um, bila terkeluar it can no longer function and the 
uh, bacterium atau the microorganism is considered destroyed. Okay, so um, daripada gambar, good job everyone. Okay, most of you dah settle pun. Ha, dah settle tulis. Ya, yeah, dah lengkap. Tanya bagus ya. Alright, I can see here. Uh, okay, Marsha nanti boleh boleh refer pada video kalau nak update semula ya. So, sekarang ni kita dah cakap pasal uh, penghasilan antibody dan cara-cara antibody ni ber, uh, apa, ber, bergerak balas lah sama ada dia buat precipitation, agglutination, neutralization, opsonization, analysis. Okay, now let's talk about what is the relationship between antibody and uh, immunity. Kita asyik sebut pasal vaccination of COVID-19 kan. Uh, so, macam mana kita macam ni kita nak memahami macam mana vaccination tu works. So kita kena faham dulu the different types of immunity exist in our body. So dalam badan kita anak-anak, kepekatan antibody dalam badan kita ni akan menunjukkan kita ni adalah imun terhadap penyakit tu atau tidak. Um, types of ant eh sorry ya, saya terlupa lagi nak tukar dia kepada draw function sebab ada yang request, uh, ada yang PM saya ni minta tukar kepada draw function supaya dia boleh take notes. Okay, okay, I take note of that. Sorry ya. Okay, okay dah boleh, boleh tulis ya. Okay, thank you, thank you for reminding me. Okay, uh, apa tadi nak saya nak sebut? Okay, so secara umum di anak-anak, uh, immunity ini boleh dibahagikan kepada dua kumpulan besar iaitu whether it is an active immunity of passive immunity. Active, ha, nama dia pun active. Ha, active sebab apa? Because our body actively produce uh, specific antibodies. Our lymphocytes have the ability atau our lymphocyte produce the antibody. Ha, sebab itu dikenali sebagai active immunity. Manakala, okay, manakala uh, passive immunity ni pula dia passif lah dia uh, passif dia tidak uh, tidak boleh bila kita kata passif dia dia tidak uh, mengambil tindakan yang banyak kan dia just ready terima saja. Ha. So true to its name, passive immunity is uh, is obtained when we got atau we receive antibodies from external sources. Okay, kalau active immunity, our lymphocyte produce antibodies. Dalam passive immunity, our body receive atau obtain the antibody from external sources. Uh, active immunity, kita menghasilkan antibody. Passive immunity, kita terima antibody daripada sumber luar. Jadi, dia ada pro and cons dia lah. So disebabkan untuk active immunity sebab kita yang hasilkan antibody itu sendiri um, the immunity obtained remains for a long period of time. Disebabkan kita yang hasilkan antibody itu sendiri keimunan yang kita dapat adalah keimunan jangka panjang. Maka berta apa um, Uh, bertahun-tahun lah. Uh, banyak tahun kita akan imun kepada penyakit tersebut. Untuk passive immunity, since we only receive sebab kita terima saja antibody, maka kita punya keimunan tu atau our immunity does not persist, does not last long. However, apa, kenapa kena ada juga passive immunity ni? Because uh, passive immunity provide an immediate protection. Ha, kalau hari tu kamu dapat antibody, hari tu jugalah kamu immune kepada penyakit tu. Itu passive immunity. Tetapi untuk active immunity anak-anak, dia ambil masa sebenarnya nak produce antibody ni. Ha, kalau kamu tengok pun orang yang uh, cucuk vaksin COVID. Kena cucuk sekali and then after a few weeks cucuk kali kedua, tunggu lepas cucuk kali kedua kena tunggu, kena standby uh, be beberapa hari uh, depends on type of vaksin barulah kita dikatakan imun kepada COVID-19. Sebab proses tu ambil masa. Uh, saya rasa yang paling lama nak tunggu ialah 
uh, Sinovac kot saya rasa yang kena tunggu lama. Uh, jadi uh, namun begitu uh, kelebihan dia ialah uh, keimunan atau immunity receive from vaccination atau from active immunity ni it last longer tapi tak 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 boleh nak dapat immediate protection it takes time lah uh, it can it takes time it can be for several weeks uh, atau several days uh, depends ya yeah? okay so uh, kalau kamu tengok pada gambar ni okay yeah? kalau kamu tengok gambar ni dalam active immunity dengan passive immunity tu pula ada dua kumpulan pecahan kumpulan sama ada uh, natural uh, apa active immunity tu dapat secara natural atau dapat secara artificial sama juga sama ada untuk passive immunity sama ada we obtain natural uh, passive immunity from natural sources or artificial sources For example, untuk active immunity, uh, natural active immunity sebab kita dijangkiti penyakit. We are infected by the disease, infected by the virus. Kalau artificial immunity, kita dapat vaccination. Kita tak sakit penyakit tersebut, kita tak ada simptom-simptom penyakit tersebut tapi kita ada keimunan because we are vaccinated by the uh, apa vaccinated lah through immunization program. Manakala passive immunity pula okay uh, kalau secara natural is between mother and baby di mana uh, kalau semasa dalam kandungan the antibodies of a mother of the mother will uh, transported into the fetus blood uh, bloodstream. Tetapi bila was dah lahir Uh, penyusuan susu ibu tu penting lah because the colostrum inside mother's breast milk contains high amount of antibody. Uh, secara artificial pula sekiranya kita macam uh, kena patut ular atau uh, ada uh, terpijak besi karat dan sebagainya ada concern for tetanus so kita boleh mendapatkan suntikan anti serum atau serum untuk men, uh, apa menerima antibody daripada suntikan. So once we receive the uh, injection, uh, kita akan immediately uh, immune to that particular disease. Alright. Nanti kita akan discuss dengan lebih lanjut natural dengan active immunity, nature, eh, na natural active immunity, artificial active immunity, natural passive immunity, artificial passive immunity ni kita akan discuss dengan lebih lanjut sekejap lagi ya. Uh, jom kita tengok yang natural dulu. Uh, okay, ini yang saya sebutkan tadilah. Okay, untuk natural immunity uh, boleh boleh highlight sekejap. Allah Akbar. Ya. Okay. Alright. Okay. Okay. Boleh highlight kat mana-mana slide kat bahagian ni. Okay. So untuk natural active immunity dan natural passive immunity, can you see the difference? Ah, uh, Similarities dia natural ni dapat daripada uh, apa? Um, organ, uh, bukan organic sources. Bukan organic sources. Bukan dapat daripada injection lah. Okay, dia punya clue dia bukan, tidak melibatkan injection. So natural active immunity bila infected, uh, natural passive immunity bila dapat daripada ibu melalui placenta atau melalui uh, breastfeeding. Okay, boleh rujuk kat sini lah. Saya ada lampirkan juga nota dia dekat sini ya. Uh, okay, tapi uh, Okay Alright, dia tengah highlight kat situ. So, um, bila untuk natural active immunity as we have discussed previously, um, apa uh, the presence of pathogens tu will stimulate our lymphocyte to produce specific antibodies dan lymphocytes, B lymphocytes tadi akan jad, bertukar jadi memory cells that will store the memories of the pathogens and it will stay dormant until it detects dia akan stay keadaan dalam keadaan dormant activated uh, bila berlaku infection next infection by pathogen yang sama tetapi dia tak ambil masa lamalah untuk 
um, destroy the pathogen sebab dah ada memory cell, memory cell simply activated dan terus produce antibodies. Okay. So, um, jom, uh, uh, jom kita tengok dekat natural passive immunity ni. Okay, kalau kita tengok dekat sini, uh, through breastfeeding tu, breastfeeding tu uh, uh, provide antibody for the baby. However, however, uh, to end apa, nak kata apa, bukan semua, bukan semua, bukan semua, bukan, bukan nak kata semua ya. Hmm. However, to ensure the survivability of uh, our babies kan Kalau kamu perasan, mungkin kamu perasan adik-adik kamu ke Atau pengalaman kamu sendiri ke Sejak daripada uh, tengok anak-anak saudara ke kan ha, Sejak dari kecil lagi walaupun uh, apa uh, baby tu receive uh, mother's antibodies Tapi kita faham uh, ada kemungkinan juga ada kemungkinan juga uh, uh, apa the baby uh, is not being breastfed. Uh, ada juga disebabkan masalah-masalah tertentu ada ibu yang tak mampu nak breastfeed uh, anak nombor satu. Nombor dua setiap manusia ni dia punya keimunan dia pelbagai sebab dia bergantung kepada uh, kita pernah expose to what type of uh, infection misalnya kan. So uh, disebabkan ada pelbagai variability variables ni ataupun mungkin tengok sejarah uh, vaccination ibu tu sendiri kalau ada certain vaccination yang dia tak dapat jadi ibu tu sendiri tak ada antibody untuk diberikan kepada baby. So to ensure the safety of uh, babies in Malaysia especially di Malaysia kita ada immunization program walaupun ada breastfeeding tetapi babies uh, apa Uh, apa highly encourage ha, saya sebut highly encourage lah sebab ada generasi sekarang yang opt out untuk tanah immunize kan uh, which is another problem that we will discuss later so uh, immunization ni penting lah sebab uh, apa uh, it takes time for each individual to develop immunity so program vaksinasi tu kalau kamu tengok ada suntikan yang masa umur 3 bulan kena ambil masa umur enam bulan, lapan bulan, umur dua tahun kena ambil. So these are all supporting uh, immunization program to further develop the immunity of the next generation. Walaupun breastfeeding tu ada tapi tak semua orang boleh buat breastfeeding. So to recover this untuk cover atau untuk membantu protect our babies ada immunization programs. So based on your understanding Can you explain one difference between active and passive immunity? Can you explain one difference between active and passive immunity? Eh, ya oh Allah. Maafkan saya ya. Saya tak bagi ni ya. Saya tak bagi prom. Kejap ya. Saya tukar. Uh, saya tukar ya. Sebentar. Okay boleh dah. Uh, can you explain one difference between passive and active immunity? Sorry, thank you for reminding me. Ni explain difference tau. Bila explain difference, uh, you have you have to state what is the difference first and explain kenapa difference tu berlaku eh.
Okay, okay good. Ah, ada yang banding dari segi sources. Very good. Eh, banding dari segi sources ya. Sorry, sorry. Sebab kita bukan banding natural dengan artificial ya. Kita banding active versus passive. Sorry, sorry. Banding sejak uh, sources tu uh, kurang sesuai. Uh, kalau kata obtain naturally lah, artificially lah. Dalam active immunity pun ada uh, natural and artificial sources. Dalam passive immunity pun ada natural atau artificial sources ya. Yeah? Okay. So hmm. Hmm. Produce by lymphocyte tu betul. Ha, tapi jangan kata apa Uh, produce art naturally atau at artificially ya. Yeah? Uh, jangan sebut jangan sebut dulu artificial atau natural. Okey. Boleh boleh boleh. Uh, good start, good start. Okay, ada yang uh, bandingkan dari segi active immunity remains for a longer period of time tapi passive immunity can only give, uh, can uh, ya, can give short term temporary protection. Okay, that is a good start, very good, good uh, differences. Can you explain why? Kenapa active immunity remains longer? Okay, betul tu, betul, betul. Observa good observation. Okay, ha, teruskan, teruskan. Oh, 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 sorry, saya sebut jawapan dia, dia terus berhenti menulis ya. Explain why, ha, explain why kenapa, kenapa boleh tahan lama untuk active immunity. Hmm. Okay, alright, alright, alright. You are on the right track. Uh, siapa ni? Sekejap saya check balik. Okay, ha, ada sample jawapan kat sini. Okey. So um, macam mana nak tunjukkan jawapan kita ni adalah explain difference bukan menyenaraikan difference. Okey. Sekali pandang jawapan yang saya uh, saya lihat di sini boleh boleh refer pada Google Meet ya. Okey, jawapan yang saya share dekat Google Meet ni sekali pandang saya berpendapat ini adalah jawapan yang uh, hanya menyenaraikan sahaja perbezaan Uh, it does not explain difference. How to make this in a form that explain difference? So, saya setuju observation dia ialah antibody from active immunity produced by lymphocyte whereas in passive immunity, uh, body does not produce its own antibody. Okay, cadangan saya ialah uh, why not kita tukar body does not produce its own antibodies tu kepada the body receive antibody from external sources. Okay. So kita uh, kita uh, apa uh, kita bandingkan dari segi mekanism dengan lebih tepat lagi iaitu kalau active immunity produce antibodies, passive immunity receive antibody from external sources. Okay. Itu satu ya cara nak tahu difference. Okay. Nombor dua macam mana kita nak tunjukkan ini adalah explanation. Mungkin kita boleh Uh, letakkan phrase seperti this uh, apa uh, therefore therefore active immunity remains for a long period of time but passive immunity remains for a short time only for example so walaupun nam, uh, walaupun apa kedua-dua ni adalah differences kita kena nampakkan jawapan kita tu, ayat kedua tu explain ayat pertama. Kita kena susun ayat kedua tu explain ayat pertama ya. Eh. Ha, barulah menunjukkan kita explain difference. Oh sorry. Sebagai contoh saya tengok ku ada yang lain ya yang uh, share uh, apa explain difference. Okay. So Uh, ini contoh ya. Okay. Ini contoh jawapan yang um, 
yang uh, explain difference. Benda yang uh, point yang sama juga kita boleh ubah cara explain difference. For example eh, uh, kita boleh sebut difference dia ialah active immunity remains for a long period of time but passive immunity ya, passive transport pula dia tak move on lagi dari osmosis ni nampaknya. Okay but passive immunity remains for a short period of time. Okay. Kalau kita, kalau sebab saya jumpa ada student yang jawab macam tu ya, dia bandingkan active immunity remains for a long period of time but passive immunity remains for a short period of time. This is because in active immunity, lymphocyte produce antibodies. But in passive immunity, antibody is uh, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, antibodies are received from external sources. Okay, ada dua cara kita nak tulis ya. Kita boleh kata uh, active immunity tahan lama, passive immunity uh, tidak tahan lama atau hanya memberikan perlindungan pada tempoh yang uh, pendek. Okay, kalau active immunity perlindungan jangka panjang passive immunity perlindungan jangka pendek. Hal ini kerana kenapa kita bagi tahu kenapa hal ini kerana keimunan aktif diperoleh daripada penghasilan antibodi oleh limfosit. Tetapi uh, pasif dalam pas, keimunan pasif antibodi diperoleh daripada sumber luar. Active immunity provide protection for a long period of time but passive immunity provide protection for a short period of time. This is because active immunity are obtained from the production of antibodies from lymphocyte whereas passive immunity is obtained from uh, receiving antibodies from external sources. So uh, kita boleh cerita benda yang sama tapi uh, nak kata tapi kita punya jawapan tu uh, menunjukkan ada kaitan antara keduanya ya. Ah okey ada dua. Okay, thank you so much. Okey. Uh, apa ini sampel jawapan dari Putri Dania dan juga Amna ya. Thank you for your uh, sharing. Okey. Okey. So anak-anak, uh, okay, uh, kita dah tengok, um, kita dah tengok beza antara active and passive immunity dan kebetulan tadi saya sebut pasal vaccination kan. Okay, jom kita tengok uh, satu video yang menunjukkan bagaimana vaksin berfungsi ya, how vaccines work. Sorry saya terpaksa cut short kamu punya apa penulisan tu. Sorry ya Azim. Uh, siapa lagi tengah tulis ni? Sorry Azim. Uh, sorry Nurin Kistina. Saya move to the next slide dulu ya. Okay. Alright. Kita pergi ke sini. Let's take a look at this video showing how vaccines work. How vaccines work. As great as memory cells are, obtaining them through an infection is unpleasant and sometimes dangerous. Vaccines are a way of tricking our bodies into making memory cells and becoming immune to a disease. They pretend to be a dangerous infection. One way of doing this is to inject invaders that can't do harm. For example, by killing them or by ripping them into pieces. Our immune systems deal with these kinds of vaccines pretty easily. Sometimes it's necessary to make our immune system work harder though to produce even more memory cells. Live vaccines are the real deal. An enemy that can punch back is a bigger challenge than a dead one. But this also sounds like a sort of horrible idea. What if the germs win? To avoid that, we breed a sort of weak cousin of the real germ in the lab. Just powerful enough to annoy the immune system and create enough memory cells. Okay, so these are the basic principles of vaccine use. They provoke a natural reaction in our bodies that makes us become immune against very dangerous diseases. Some, like the flu virus, mutate so often that we need a new vaccine every year, 
but most vaccines protect us for years or even a lifetime. But there's a catch. Like everything in life, vaccines have another side. Side effects. What are they and what happens if your child develops one? Okay, so uh, that is a good introduction on how vaccines work. Basically, vaccines are the weakened version of the virus that we want to produce uh, immunity from. And then, um, apa, bila kita dah dapat injection tu, badan kita akan start produce antibodies specific to the type of virus without having the adverse effects of infection. So, sebagai penutup untuk kelas kita pada hari ini, pada slide ini ditunjukkan several steps, oh sorry, ditunjukkan several steps, eh, kejap ya, eh, not this one, this one. Okay, several steps related to how vaccines work. Can you uh, label the steps uh, one to five, mana yang start dulu? Statement mana yang nombor satu, nombor dua, nombor tiga, nombor empat dan nombor lima? Eh, tak. Oh, I know why. Sekejap eh. Alright. Okay, good job. Okay, nombor satu dah ada. Ha, nombor satu, when vaccine is injected into the body, that is a good um, good observation. Nombor satu. Nombor dua, when vaccine is injected into the body, yes, it stimulate lymphocyte to produce antibodies to fight the pathogen. Okay. Nombor tiga, nombor tiga ialah statement yang mana? Ha, nombor satu dengan nombor dua kita dah identify. Nombor tiga apa dia? Ya. Yeah. Okay, jom tengok. Ha, I would like to share Hamim's idea. Thank you Hamim for your submission. Okay ya. Yeah. Nombor, okay ya. Yeah. Statement nombor satu, when vaccine is injected into the body. Nombor dua tu kaya Hamim. Uh, nombor statement nombor tiga tu sebenarnya nombor dua uh, okay. uh, Stimulate lymphocyte to produce antibodies to fight the pathogen So Hamim kena tukar yang nombor dua tu uh, Nombor tiga tu jadi nombor dua ya Hamim uh, Tukar dulu Ah, uh, Very good thank you Okay so nombor dua stimulate lymphocyte to produce antibodies Okay so selepas uh, This injection, okay, first injection result in low level of antibody production insufficient to protect the body from disease. So Hamim, statement yang kamu label nombor empat tu tukar dengan statement, uh, tukar kepada tiga. Okay, tukar kepada tiga. Thank you. So statement nombor tiga, this injection result in low level of antibody production. Kita tengok pada first injection. Kemudian statement number four tepat Hamim uh, iaitu this injection needed to increase the antibody production to a level of immunity. This injection tu apa? Second injection lah. Dan nombor lima selepas dapat second injection uh, apa if the individual is infected by actual pathogen lymphocyte will produce enough antibodies. Kenapa? Sebab lepas second injection kalau kat anak-anak tengok graph the concentration of antibody melebihi garis level of immunity. Apa maksud garis level of immunity ni? Garis level of immunity ni ialah uh, menunjukkan the concentration of antibody in the blood that is enough to cause our body to be immune to that particular disease. Kalau keperkataan antibody kita pada level tersebut, uh, badan kita dikira sebagai immune terhadap penyakit tersebut lah. 
Ha, jadi ini hanya boleh berlaku selepas dapat booster dose second injection. Okay so alamat kelas kita tinggal 2 minit berbaki. Saya minta maaf hari ni time management saya tak berapa baik pula. Selalunya by this time kita boleh summarize kan. So I would like to summarize what we have discussed today. Hari ni kita dah discuss second line of defense. And then we, uh, kita discuss mengenai phagocytosis, inflammation and also fever. Okay, lepas tu kita discuss mengenai third line of defense bermula dengan peranan T lymphocyte dan B lymphocyte. Lepas tu kita tengok macam mana cara antibody attack pathogen dan antigen. Kemudian kita juga telah uh, tengok apa beza natural dengan uh, passive immunity. Okay, so ada yang share kat sini. Oh, okay, dia ada masalah untuk the action of antibodies. Okay, tak apa. Nanti kita semak sama-sama. Thank you for your feedback. Dan hmm. uh, nanti next class kita akan tengok dengan lebih detail mengenai graf-graf uh, ni ya. Uh, ni saja saya nak kenalkan dulu dengan graf uh, injection of uh, vaccine tu. Nanti saya perkenalkan lagi satu graf, graf bila injection uh, anti serum pula macam mana ya. Alright. The first part easy ya sebab phagocytosis tu banyak kali kita jumpa ya. Alright. So I will change Uh, this particular presentation to student base so you can uh, take a look at the previous slide dan boleh juga refer kepada sampel jawapan untuk update jawapan kamu pada slide-slide sebelum ni and untuk mereka yang uh, bersemangat wajar, yang proaktif, uh, you can also take a look at the uh, next slide after this dan boleh cuba jawab juga kan Ha, itu kita panggil sebagai flip learning lah. You go through the materials that we be discuss before class nanti. Ha, lepas tu nanti tinggal nak semak saja kamu punya understanding. So that is all for today. Thank you so much everyone for coming. Uh, sorry for taking one minute of your time. It is always a pleasure teaching you and having you in my class. Sekian wabillahi taufiq wa hidayah. Assalamualaikum. Selamat pagi. Thank you teacher. Thank you. Terima kasih. Sama-sama. Sama-sama.